Sam and Tommy, TV show review and more. The eight episode Hulu series, Pam and Tommy, the untold story of the world's most infamous sex tape, was released earlier this year. The tagline, the greatest love story ever sold. On the left is the real couple, Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee Bass, and on the right are the actors who play the couple. Yes, the guy actor is the Romanian Sebastian Stan. You know him from Marvel movies. What were you doing back in 1994, 95 and 96 when this media bomb exploded? Where I lived, so Romania, we had cable TV at the time, so probably something aired on MTV. I was 12 at the time, I didn't know much about Pam or Tommy, and I didn't really care about American rock stars or playmates, uh, 12 years old. So what happened? As much as I can say now, 20 years later, the Canadian bombshell Pamela Anderson, the favorite playmate of Playboy magazine in the 90s, and mermaid on Baywatch TV show, well, that one aired in Romania, met the Greek-born American Tommy Lee Bass, the terrible drummer of the rock band Motley Crue. And they fell in love. Now, the entire band, Motley Crue, was notorious for terrible and explosive behavior outside of shows. There's a Netflix show uh, about this band, and it's called The Dirt. Maybe you want to check that one out as well for curiosity. As public as the two of them were, a carpenter who was working on their house, towards whom Tommy Lee behaved horribly, the guy decided to take revenge on Tommy Lee. So uh, Rand enters their mansion and steals a safe containing several items of financial value. Among those items was also a videotape with the couple making love. So Rand decided to take his vendetta to another level by publishing the material. Initially, it was a postal delivery against a fee. Many people copied the tape and sold it. So uh, Rand loses most of the benefits. The tape went into so many homes. But because the early 90s were also the beginning of the internet, the tape was published free of charge on a video chat site, just when they thought it couldn't get much further. It definitely exploded online as well. Although the footage was explicit, as one character in the series puts it, that was not pornography. The material showed the emotional and sexual intimacy of one of the most explosive couples in the 90s. It was filmed just for the two of them, and it was clearly never meant to go public. Still, as we already know, once you've filmed or recorded something, it's unlikely to remain private. In my opinion, their story was just a signal of what was to come with the explosion of technology. It was a warning of how far something like this breach of intimacy could go and how ugly it could get. It affected both their personal and professional lives. It might not seem like much today as these things are ubiquitous nowadays, but that doesn't make it okay back then or now. It's worth mentioning that even today, even something like this uh, can wreak havoc on people's lives. At that time, being the first public experience of this kind, it was exploited to the fullest by anyone with an entrepreneurial spirit and not so much scruples. And also the public had no knowledge or awareness of how to react, how to think that maybe those people didn't want that stuff out there. Sadly, Pam and Tommy had no way of stopping the phenomenon back then. Why? Although the tape had been stolen from their home and they did report the theft to the police, since that material had gone public and it was talked about in the media, so TV, newspapers, the American legal system considered that the 
broadcast of that stolen material was protected by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the right to free speech. That was a sad day for the American legal system. And also an ugly warning for what would happen to people who became victims of privacy breaches. The hardest part was for Pam, a woman, to be taken seriously after that episode. Although Tommy was also in the material, and as Sebastian Stan's character has a line in the series, there's my dick in it too, the press and society tax Pamela more than Tommy. Nobody wanted her in movies anymore, and her career took a downturn from that moment. The show itself shows critical moments in the story of the two. Yes, it is explicit, but both actors were prosthetics. Honestly, I was surprised to find so much nudity in a mainstream series, even if it's about porn stars. Sebastian Stan also has moments when he plays in the full Monty, so he's pitch naked. Still, he's wearing a genital prosthesis. The actress playing Pam was also wearing prosthetics too. And this is right in the first episodes and it's striking how explicit mainstream TV has gotten. One thing I really liked was that Pamela meditated. Yep, in the 90s, this practice in the USA and Canada was already known. Another thing to say here is that Pamela Anderson had an official Instagram account possibly accounts on other platforms as well. I only saw that one. Shortly before this series aired on Hulu, she announced that she was permanently leaving the online. There's just one photo now on her profile on Instagram with a handwritten message. Uh, this story was horrible for her back in the 90s and the TV series was not made with her consent. Again, there's that right to free speech and expression, even if it is about a human's life that is still alive, so can still be affected by this. I saw an Entertainment Weekly interview with the actors from the series. The actress who plays Pamela stated that she had contacted Pam several times after being cast in the role. She was sorry she did not hear back from Pamela and she wished she had had a dialogue with Pam. Also, in that interview, it was pointed out that the series showed the couple's drama, what they went through, and how ugly the whole story was for both of them. Even so, Pamela had nothing to do with the show, and it caused her to leave the online world for good. So what did I get from the show? Their drama was ugly. I don't think a happy person ever wants to go through something like that. It leaves one scarred for life in what would have to be very strong, well above average strong, to handle something like that. Also, we like sex and we visually hunt down those sexually attractive. Still, we figuratively cut them to pieces, we devalue them, we treat them disrespectfully, we look down upon them and we trample on their personal lives. That's our relationship to sexuality and other people's attractiveness. Throughout this process, we forget that they too, so the sex symbols, are human beings. Alas, this is still happening today. Especially since many people show a lot from their personal lives on social media. After watching the show, I got many thoughts and questions. Um, in the 21st century, will we all turn to actors and actresses and turn them into sex symbols and see only one side of them, how physically attractive they are? Or will we bring forward people who can help us grow in sexuality, not just consume them visually, but rather appreciate them as valuable human resources learn and grow with their support? When do we overcome the need to turn attractive people into symbols and instead look at them as human beings also? When do we bring forward people who inspire others to develop 
this side of their lives healthily and harmoniously as we grow older? When do we collectively appreciate, both in fame and commercially, people who help others overcome sexual trauma? Some many men and women do this. When do we look at what is healthy and mature here? When do we get out of the pubescent sexuality model and understand our expression transforms as we grow older? Yeah, this might sound pretty unattractive, but in truth, we can't expect to ex express in our 40s or 50s sexually as we did in our 20s. I invite you to think about it. If you're still watching my vlogs or have already signed up for a class of mine, think about this. As an intimacy coach, I ask myself these questions after watching the Pam and Tommy TV show. When I shared this on my social media, so pretty much what I stated here, I got a few comments. Uh, some people saying that those were just products of the American economy and we were inundated with details from their lives, not that we as people cared about them. What was assumed there, it was, of course, something like this could have happened. Why should we have empathy or compassion for these people? My response to that was, these are not products. They are human beings. With the risk of oversimplifying things, I don't think a public person is a product that's still a human being that maybe reached fame, maybe their job is in the public eye and actually serves a purpose. It doesn't give us right or green light to trample on their lives and then say, oh, but they had it coming because they exposed themselves like this. No, when somebody steals from your home, when somebody publishes material, intimate material about you without your consent, that's abuse. Revenge porn that happens nowadays all across the board, even in our country, it's not okay. We take it as ubiquitous. We take it as normal. It's not. Just because it happens frequently, it's not normal. So this is where I stand when it comes to um, people being put into sex symbol roles and lifted on a pedestal and looked at just from that side Okay, we're all people. We've got a lot of sides of ourselves. We, we have the right to privacy. Nowadays, with all the media and, and technology and social media, that's a new mainstream media, as far as I see it, we've got to fight for our privacy even more. I'm curious, how much do you expose of yourself on social media? Were you a victim of revenge porn? Did you victimize anybody through revenge porn. I would doubt somebody like that would watch my videos, but I would love to know. And have you ever blamed the victim? Like, were you ever um, tempted to do that? Have you ever uh, made team with the aggressor? Or have you ever stood up for a victim of revenge porn or, or breach of intimacy? I would really like to know what kind of um, mold your cast on, I would like to know what you're made of when it comes to this topic. That being said, we're not public people here, so I encourage you again to go for sexual growth in a healthy way. Check out the ebook, Get Your Orgasmic Intimacy, super strategic, super helpful. Check out the programs in the dojo. Those are programs that help you grow. Maybe they're not going to turn you into a sex symbol, but they're going to help you get a healthy sex life. And join me on Patreon. That's where I'm at these days. That's where I'm sustainable in my work, not on my YouTube channel. Sadly, when it comes to sexuality, we still have censorship and human resources in this field are still struggling. I mean, if I would open up an account on OnlyFans, I'd probably get rich, but I don't want to do that. That's not my work. I want to be a coach. I want to do this publicly. However, via uh, YouTube, my work has never been sustainable. I've been a good sport about it, so I found a way to make my work sustainable. I would love it if you join me on Patreon, support my work, 
get benefit from my work so actually get growth and that's it i'll see you in the next videos let me know what you think about victims of intimacy breaches revenge porn are you siding with the victims are you siding with the aggressors are you getting the heck out of dodge and not worrying about this at all i'd love to know see ya bye